Hi, my name is Omar al Rawi. Today I'll be presenting our work, Forecasting Malware Capabilities from Cyber Attack Memory Images. This work is in collaboration with Professor Salta Farmaggio and the Cyber Forensics Innovation Lab. The topic of this talk is about cyber forensics, so I'll be using Dark Hotel APT malware as a motivating example. Dark Hotel is an APT attack that uses multiple infection vectors, selective payloads, and targets C-level executives. Dark Hotel uses spear phishing to target executive personnel, like CEOs and CFOs. Once Dark Hotel infects a system, it injects its code into Windows Explorer, deletes its original binary, profiles the system, and sends that information to a CNC server. When an IDS detects this anomalous activity, it alerts the end host agent to terminate the process and capture a memory snapshot. At this point, incident responders must quickly understand Dark Hotel's capability from the different available forensic sources to prevent further damage. Meet Jim. Jim is an incident responder that must investigate this alert and assess the impact on his organization. Using the memory forensics and network logs, Jim investigates and tries to reconstruct the attack timeline to understand the attack. A crucial part of Jim's work is to understand what the malware was doing and what it was going to do next. This information is important because it helps Jim to proactively deploy defenses and prevent the attacker from moving deeper within the network. Jim must repeatedly carry out multiple triage steps to investigate the intrusion. After several hours, Jim was able to locate a suspicious binary file that him and his team start to investigate. Jim loads the binary into a static dissembler and a debugger to manually analyze and stitch together the different artifacts. Unfortunately, this process is slow and requires many context switching, which gives the attacker more time. Also, because this task is cognitively hard, Jim is prone to making errors. Jim also uses a malware sandbox to analyze the malware sample, but by the time the sample runs, the CNC server has gone offline and no longer responsive. Jim is stuck with shallow behavior reports that have very little relevance to the intrusion. Running out of options, Jim loads the memory into Volatility to analyze the artifacts manually. This approach relies on heuristic signatures which can miss important artifacts for the investigation. Jim wishes that he can square this incident away, but as we know, the incident response process is fraught with challenges, and for Jim to understand what the malware was doing and what it was going to do next is almost impossible using these tools. So let's help Jim. Jim needs the right execution context to guide the malware into revealing its stage capabilities. Malware internally gather input from registry, network, environment variables to make behavioral decisions. It turns out that malware memory image contains this internal concrete execution state unique to the specific attack incident under investigation. Therefore, if Jim can find and interpret the state, he can get a better idea about what capabilities the malware was going to exercise when it was detected. What we notice is that if we can animate the code and data pages in memory, we can perform forward code exploration from the captured snapshot and reuse these early concrete execution data to infer the malware's next step. For example, using the captured memory image, we found that the CNC malware capability was staged in memory and we were able to extract the CNC server, where it was going to exfiltrate sensitive data. Based on this idea, we propose seeding the symbolic exploration of malware's pre-stage paths with concrete execution state obtained via the memory image forensics. Remember, Jim's goal as an incident responder is to forecast what capabilities were going to be deployed before the malware was detected. This way, Jim can counter these stage payloads with the right defenses. To embody this idea, we built Forecast. Forecast is a post-detection incident response analysis pipeline that uses symbolic execution and memory forensics to explore staged malware capabilities. Given the Dark Hotel's memory dump from the infected machine, Forecast rebuilds the last context of the malware process using the memory image. 
and extracts code, CPU state, and reference data from the process's memory. Then we augment the parse state with symbolic exploration and assign probabilities based on the last instruction pointer to walk the code segment using symbolic analysis. Since we're applying symbolic execution to a specific process context with concrete values, we're able to avoid state and path explosion problems that traditional approaches face. We base forecast analysis method on the degree of concreteness formulation. This is a formal model that allows us to numerically quantify the probability of each staged path based on the mixing of concrete and symbolic values. This approach is analogous to weather forecast, where we want to predict what will happen in the near future. The intuition behind this approach is that concrete paths are more likely to be exercised by malware since they're staged in memory, where our paths that access more symbolic state are less likely to be executed. Finally, we use an extensible plugin interface to identify capabilities based on a sequence of API calls and their parameters that constrain and connect the system calls together. This grounded approach allows forecasts to predict that it will be cloudy with a chance of exfiltration, code injection, and CNC communication. To evaluate forecasts, we tried to mimic a real infected environment. We collected 6,727 recent malware samples from public sources such as VirusShare. We set up forecasts on a Ubuntu server that fetches malware samples and executes them in a Windows virtual machine. Once the malware executes, we deploy a SNORT IDS signature to detect CNC communication. SNORT will send an alert to the end host agent that will capture and terminate the suspect process and send the memory image over to forecast server for analysis. Using this setup, we evaluated forecasts on 6,700 samples and found that forecast has an accuracy of 95% on average and takes 291 seconds to explore a memory image. We also found that per exploration task, Forecast encounters 26 system call APIs and visits 1600 states. The most popular forecasted capabilities were Dropper and Persistence, which we found in 70% of the samples. We also tested forecasts against adversarial tactics, packed malware, and compared forecasts with state-of-the-art symbolic and concolic analyzers. We have additional experiments in the paper. For example, we conducted an in-depth evaluation of forecasts on 14 malware samples that we sourced from security reports and manually reverse engineered. For each output, we manually went back to each sample and verified it was correct. Overall, forecasts identified 45 out of the 49 capabilities for the 14 samples. Taking an example, the BokBok malware, we calculated the forecasted path probability based on the number of constraints. For code injection, we identified 166 constraints. For the CNC communication, we identified 159 and 257 for exfiltration. We can see that the more constraints needed, the lower the probability the path will be exercised. Not only did we predict the probability of the capability execution, we also correctly ordered them. This result can help analysts quickly gauge what capabilities were staged before detection and help prioritize what defenses should go in place. The full paper is available online. Please take a look. We have more detail about forecast design and its evaluation. The code is also online, is publicly available. With that, I would like to thank you for listening and I would be happy to take any questions.